Today's Vim tutorial is brought to you by the letter G. So when you're using Vim, every single key on your keyboard does a thing. They're all special in their own little way, and you've learned a lot about them by watching my Vim tutorials. But today, we're going to really focus on the power of G. So you probably already know about Big G and GG. Those go to the bottom and top of your document respectively. Uh, that's pretty much movement 101, but G can also be used in combination with other characters to do some really cool things like navigate a paragraph correctly, or at least the way that you would want to navigate it. So this happens a lot whenever you paste in text that's copied from somewhere else into Vim. Uh, and this pasted text is just the Crypto Anarchist Manifesto. Uh, there's some other things in here, but that's pretty much what the body of it is. And when you paste these paragraphs, Vim inserts them as all one line. So like if I wanted to go to the end of this line, for example, with dollar sign, it brings me all the way down here to the end of the paragraph. Same thing with zero, that should have brought me uh, like over here to the start of this line, but instead it brings me up to the top of this paragraph because there's no line breaks here. Um, and this is actually something that can really throw you off if you're used to GUI text editors because they usually will insert those line breaks automatically for you. Um, but it's not a problem in Vim. All you have to do is just prepend uh, G to those different movements. So if I wanted to go to the end of this first line, I just do G dollar sign, boom, I'm at the end of the line. If I wanted to go back to the beginning, so like let's say I'm here, but I don't wanna go you know, back to where it says computer, I wanna to go to the beginning of this line, G zero, and boom, there I am. Uh, and then same thing with J and K. So J, if you just use it by itself, and K if you just use it by itself, they skip over the paragraph. But if we do G, J, boom, we can go through every single line, G, K, we can go through every single line as well. So now you know how to navigate these paragraphs when they get messed up, but a better solution might be to just reformat that paragraph to make it easier for you to navigate normally. And this has the benefit of making it easier to read as well, because right now the words are getting cut off in kind of a weird way, like, you know, interact is cut off. Uh, if we go to the end, negotiate is cut off and it makes it a whole lot harder to read. So just do GQ and you could do this from anywhere in the paragraph, GQ, enter and boom. Now the entire paragraph is formatted in a more sensible way. Uh, you know, I can just do regular J's and K's. I can do regular dollar signs and zeros and none of them are cut off. And also uh, another helpful little tidbit if you want to redo an action that you did in normal mode, just hit the period button. So boom, I can hit the period button on this paragraph and it'll automatically do all of that for me. Same thing on this one. Um, so what else do we have? Oh yeah, so we've got GA. So GA actually gives you character encoding information. So. Um, the ASCII value for the letter A is 97. If I wanted to get the ASCII value for H, just do a GA on it, and boom, 104 is its ASCII value. It also gives you the hex and the octal value as well. So this is really handy if you need to just quickly know what the ASCII value is for some random character. You could just type it out, do a GA on it, and then it'll give it to you. Um, so that's gonna be way faster than pulling up an ASCII cheat sheet, it might also be faster than trying to pull it out of memory if you've, if you've memorized the ASCII table. I've met a couple of people in my life that have done that. Um, I'm not one of them <laughs> because I don't like to memorize stuff like that. Uh, but let me know in the comments below, if you're someone who has memorized the ASCII table, which is faster, your synapses firing and, and accessing that piece of memory or just typing GA? I'm honestly not sure which will be quicker. Um, here's another G move that software devs might do. So I guess technically you could do this outside of software development, but this is how I use it. So this is how I'm gonna give the example. Uh, let's pretend that this is a library file that I'm importing uh, to go with some code that's written down here. And maybe this is a library that I wrote myself and I'm testing it and trying to debug it because when I use it in my function, it's not doing what I want it to do. 
Well, if I've eliminated the function in the main file as the source of the bug, the only other place to really check is the library file itself, especially if this is one that I've written myself and it hasn't been uh, tested a whole lot. Well, if you have a string that is equal to that file name, which it would be if you're you know, importing a library at the top, you can automatically open up that file in Vim with GF. Uh, so you could just run this on any area of the string and boom, it's going to open this file, uh, which is my you know pretend library file. Now this does have to be in the same path as the file that you're opening it from. So like some lib and the crypto anarchist manifesto are right now both in my documents folder. Um, and then we can go back to that original file by doing control plus six. But you can access files from anywhere on your computer. You just have to specify the path as the file name. So like down here, for example, um, this is a Gen2 kernel that I have uh, just in my GitHub folder. So it's a completely different directory, different parent directory, but same thing, GF, open it up, boom. I've got the Gen2 kernel open here. Uh, and once again, that is control plus the number six to go back to the original file. G plus and G minus are shortcuts for redo and undo, uh, but Vim's undo and redo is a little bit more advanced than what we see in traditional text editors because Vim actually has undo branches. Um, and G plus and G minus are how you can navigate those branches. Now, if you're actually going to be using this feature in Vim, I would recommend, highly recommend that you install um, this plugin to it, which will let you view those change trees in a more visual manner, because uh, it can obviously get really, really confusing if you're not able to see what you're actually uh, going back to or what you're reverting the file back to. So I'd recommend installing this uh, alongside it if you're going to use that. And if you're watching the Vim playlist that I made, I have a tutorial for how to install uh, Vim plugins as well. So let's take a look at what else G can do. Um, so you can also use G for uh, replacements, uh, replacing strings. So to replace a line of text in Vim, normally what you would do is enter command mode by pressing colon, uh, and then you'll start seeing whatever you type show up down there. Uh, and normally the way that string substitution work is you do S and then like foo is what you're searching for, bar is what you wanna replace it with, and then G to apply that uh, globally to whatever line that you're currently on. So We've got the Crypto Anarchist Manifesto here. Let's say that we wanted to email this to our parents so that we could red pill them on crypto. But we might wanna make some edits to this file before we send it over because the word anarchy is used in here a whole lot. And that might scare them, you know? I'm pretty sure that Fox and CNN are routinely telling people that anarchy's bad. So let's go ahead and make this a little bit more normie friendly. We're going to remove um, anarchy. And it would help if I spelled it correctly. And let's replace it with something a little more friendly like Liberty, all right? So boom, we did that, uh, but that only replaced the first instance of Anarchy. So your parents might read through this and say, okay, all right, this, this is starting to look pretty good. This is, you know, looking pretty well. I pretty much agree with everything that's here. Oh no, what's this sentence? Crypto Anarchy will allow national secrets to be traded freely and will allow illicit and stolen materials to be traded uh, and then it goes on about anonymous. That's like three scary words in a row, right? Anonymous, anarchy, and illicit. That's going to automatically trigger their this is bad function. Uh, so to reapply that substitution uh, move that we did to all of the lines that are in the file, just do G plus ampersand. So now you see all the anarchy is gone. And again, that is G plus ampersand. It's going to redo uh, whatever substitution you did to basically everything uh, that's in the file. So we've got that. 
There's also a more fine-tuned way that we can do this substitution with CGN. So let's go ahead and search for anarchy again, and that will bring us, that'll bring our cursor to the beginning of the first instance of the word. Um, so then we can do CGN. That's going to delete the first occurrence and then drop us into insert mode. And then I can start typing liberty and escape brings me back to normal mode. Now, that move that I just did is going to get stored as a movement by the period command. So basically I can just do um, period to redo it, or I can apply it to very specific uh, instances of anarchy. So for example, maybe I don't want to um, replace the first instance of it. Maybe I want to replace the second instance of it. And I can just do that with two period. So we've got liberty, then anarchy, then liberty, and then an anarchy again. So there you go. It's a more fine-tuned way that you can redo substitutions with G. The last two tricks that I'm going to show you is how to get back to some stuff that you were doing before. So uh, let's say that you're just, you know, typing some text here, blah, 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 and then you get interrupted for whatever reason, and then maybe you jump around in the file, you're down at the bottom now. How in the world am I supposed to know which line I was last editing? You could try playing with undo and redo to, uh, you know, sort of figure it out that way. Um, but that's not a really good way if you're, you know, just typing stuff and then you go somewhere else. What you can do to go right back to the text that you were editing and it'll drop you uh, to the exact spot that you need to be to continue editing is just GI. So boom, it took me back to where I was editing, put me at the end and I'm in insert mode uh, so I can continue typing whatever. Uh, there's also a similar thing that you can do with visual mode. So let's say that I'm here and oh, let's, go to the beginning of a word. So let's say that I'm here and I'm in visual line or visual mode and I'm just selecting all of this stuff here. And then I get distracted for some reason. I go out of my visual mode and I go back down here to the bottom, G, V, boom. Now I'm back to uh, my visual selection and I'm back in visual mode so I can continue on uh, from where I left off. So there you go, that's the power of G. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Have a great day, enjoy the sunshine. I think that this is actually the first day of 80 degree weather that we've had up in New England, so I know that I'll definitely be going outside.